Hello everyone, welcome to the first lesson of chapter 5. Chapter 5 we will be talking about or learning about triangles in the Pythagorean Theorem. And we're going to start with lesson 5-1, looking at lines and identifying angles as well. Our essential question throughout the chapter will be, how can algebraic concepts be applied to geometry? And for this lesson's vocabulary, we're going to have quite a long list and we will go through each one of these. They will be they will be second nature to you by the time we're done this chapter. Perpendicular lines, parallel lines, transversal, interior angles, exterior angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, corresponding angles. We also have some math symbols that we're going to be using. We have here parallel Okay, parallel lines, so we can use this to say a line is parallel to, okay, this symbol is perpendicular, and um, measure of angle 1, the measure of angle 1, you see, M of angle 1 is the measure of angle 1. So, since we have so much vocabulary to look at, it only makes sense to start with vocabulary. When two lines intersect in a plane and form right angles, they are called perpendicular lines. When two lines are called parallel lines, or two lines are called parallel lines, when they are in the same plane and do not intersect. So let's try to make some sense out of this by filling out this table. Okay, here we have the line, parallel lines. They look like this. They go side by side. They never touch. That's what we call parallel lines. So define it in your own words. I would say lines that never cross, they never touch, right? And then we look at perpendicular lines and we see that it creates um, a T or this, uh, this in this instance or in this example, an upside down T, but it could also be a right side up T or sideways or however. And we see that these lines, they actually do cross. So the two lines cross, they touch and they form a 90 degree angle. So simply put, two lines that cross and form 90 degree angle. So now let's draw it. If I were to draw um, two parallel lines, I would need a ruler to make sure that I could completely straight and the angle of either one doesn't change. My two perpendicular lines would have the same gap in between them because they both have the same angle. Now here I drew, I drew them horizontally, they could be on an angle, they could be vertical, okay, going up and down, but as long as they both have the same angle and they do not touch. Okay, that's, that's, those are parallel lines. Perpendicular lines, they cross and they create a perfect 90 degree angle at each, um, at each uh, place where they intersect. Okay, so you can see that I drew my little box there, which uh, signifies 90 degree angle. Now, describe a real-world example of it. So, where would you see perfectly good parallel lines? I can think of railroad tracks, perfectly straight railroad tracks. Um, they would be uh, parallel. And where would we see perpendicular lines? I think of an intersection where two streets cross. See, this looks like a street corner, doesn't it? Okay, now let's take a look at the key concept for this lesson, which is uh, essentially the learning the vocabulary. And we will be using these words a lot in class, so please familiarize yourself with these words and make an effort to use this vocabulary when participating. So we have transversals and angles. And here we've been given an example of uh, two parallel lines. You see this? A set of parallel line and one transversal line called a transversal line because it crosses more than one line on the same angle. You see, these two lines are the same angle, right? They're the same. And this one line is, creates a straight line through both of them, which is going to create a lot of equal angles. And you'll see as I explain it here. So let's watch. Okay. A line that intersects two or more lines is called a transversal. Think of it like transportation or transnational, uh, things that go from one place to another. So transversal and uh, eight angles are formed. You see the eight angles right there. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, right? Eight angles are formed. The angles are right in there where the two lines meet. Okay? And then we have uh, interior angles. Interior angles is when we're talking about the angles between the two parallel lines. And exterior angles is when we talk about the angles outside the lines. So interior angles lie inside the lines. For example, angle 3, angle 4, angle 5, angle 6. See? Angle 3, angle 4, angle 5, angle 6. They're right inside the two parallel lines. So these are interior angles. Exterior angles lie outside the lines, outside the parallel lines. So 1, 2, 7, and 8. You see that? Angle 1, 2, 7, and 8. Now, when we talk about alternate interior lines, alternate, think of opposites and across. So almost like when we say kitty corner. Watch. For example, angles 4 and 6 have the same angle. And you can see it. If you follow the line, it goes straight, and then it goes on to this angle. If you were to flip this upside down, it would match this angle here, straight line and down like this. It's almost like a Lego piece. I'll draw it for you. So it would go straight, right? This is angle six that I'm drawing here. And then it goes on an angle like that, right? I could take that and I could flip it around upside down, spin it around this way, spin it around that way, and it would fit. If I spun it around that way, it would fit right there. I think you can see that, right? So alternate interior angles are interior angles that lie on opposite sides of transversal of the transversal. When the lines are parallel, their measures are equal. For example, measure of angle four is equal to measure of angle six. Angle four is equal to measure six. And angle of measure three is equal to angle of measure five. You see this one? This is an acute angle here. And you have the same acute angle in here. Okay. Here you have a obtuse angle and an obtuse angle. Okay. I'll try to draw that out for you on the board in class and you'll you'll you might you might understand it more. Now we have alternate exterior angles. So we did the interior angles between the lines. Now we're going to talk about the exterior angles outside the parallel lines. These are uh, exterior angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal. When the lines are parallel, so they're talking about these lines. When these lines are parallel, their measures are equal. So measure of 1 is equal to 7. You see, again, 1 is an acute angle right in here where you have horizontal to the transversal line on this angle. It's the same as this one, horizontal to the transversal line. Okay, this angle is the same as this angle. And then measure of angle two is equal to angle of measure eight. This, you see this obtuse angle? It's the same thing as this obtuse angle down here. And then finally, corresponding angles. Are those angles that are in the same position on the two lines in relation to the transversal? When the lines are parallel, their measures are equal. Notice that it says when the lines are parallel, these lines must be parallel. If they're not, we cannot apply any of these rules. So you see here how 7 looks exactly like 3, how 8 looks exactly like 4 without having to move anything. 1 looks exactly like 5, and 2 looks exactly like 6. That's what they're trying to tell you here with corresponding angles. Angle 1, let me move this up. Angle 1, measure of angle 1 is equal to measure of angle 5. 1, 5. Angle 2 is 6. 2, 6. 4 is 8. 4, 8. And finally, 3 is equal to 7. 3 is equal to 7, to angle 7. So please uh, make sure you familiarize yourself with these words. As I mentioned, if you want, you can print this section of the, of the page or uh, just make a note on in your book about it. You don't have to uh, write all these examples. You can write your own definition or the exact same definitions without adding in the angles. Uh, whatever helps you remember. them. Let's make a special note as well. Uh, special notation is used 
to indicate perpendicular and parallel lines. You see these notations here? That tells us, these two little triangles, it tells us that they're parallel. While this 90 degree box right here tells us it's perfectly perpendicular. Example 1. Classify each pair of angles in the figure as alternate interior, alternate exterior, or corresponding. So we have uh, angle 1 and angle 7. Let's see. Angle 1 and angle 7. Um, here's our parallel lines and here's our transversal line, right? And we can see that they both have the parallel right, line and they both have a transversal line, okay? If I were to take this and flip it around and put it here, it would fit perfectly. So what can we say about these two? Are they inside? Are they interior inside the two parallel lines? No, they're outside. So we know we can say they're exterior. And they go, like I mentioned earlier, kitty corner. Or you can say um, opposite or alternate, alternate, right? Angles. So we can say that angle 1 and angle 7 are exterior angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal. They are alternate exterior angles. Let's try number 2. Okay. Oh, um, here we go. We need that image still. Angle two and angle six. Angle two again and angle six. Now this is an exterior one and an interior one, but you can see that they both have the same line and the same transversal. So they're going to be the same. We can say they are corresponding to one another. So angle two and angle six are in the same position on the two lines. They are corresponding angles. Okay, if you think you got it, let's try this. Um, let's classify the relationships between angle 4 and angle 6. Let's find them. Angle 4 is right in here, and angle 6 is on the other side. They're both between the parallel lines, okay? So if you could, if you could um, write we, anything down, you know that the first thing that you would say is that they're both interior, right? You say they're interior. They're also opposite of one another, or we can say alternate. Okay, So go ahead, pause the video and write your answer down. Pause now. Okay, I hope you pause the video. So again, they're interior, right? And they're alternate to one another. So what can we say? I would say that angle 4 and angle 6 are alternate interior angles. And I say that because... They lie inside of the two lines, but on opposite sides of the transversal. And now that we know all this, this is really the uh, point of this entire lesson, is finding missing angles or missing measurements, right? Because now that we know all of these rules, and we know that um, interior or uh, yeah, alternate interior angles or uh, alternate exterior angles, corresponding angles, all, um, they, they equal one another. If I were to be missing any of these angles, and I have it somewhere else, for example, if I'm missing 2, but I have 6, I can solve for 2, because it's the same as 6. If I'm missing 7, but I have 3, I can solve for 7, because we know that these are corresponding angles. Okay, or if we have transverse interior angles, or I could say alternate interior angles, I know that if I'm missing four, six would be the same one, right? So six, or even look here, these are called vertical angles. I just told you that two and six are equal, aren't they? But six and four are also equal, right? So that means that four and two must be equal. They're vertical angles. You see that? Because they have the same... Um, uh, obtuse, yeah, the same obtuse angle, which means then 1 and 3 must be equal because they're vertical angles, same as 5 and 7. Okay, so when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, special angle relationships exist. If you know the measure of one of the angles, you can find the measures of all the angles. Suppose you know the measure of angle 1, right here, angle 1 is 50. That must mean the angle 3 is 50. And we know that angles that are adjacent to one another or next to each other on a straight line must equal 180. Right? Or the entire thing must equal 
360. So if I have 50, 50 here, what two equal numbers am I missing to create an entire 360? So uh, you can use the, uh, that to find the measure of angle 2, 3, and 4. You see this? So if this is 50, that must mean that angle 3 is 50. So measure of angle 3 equals 50 because measure of angle 1 and 3 are vertical angles. Vertical angles equal one another. Vertical. And adjacent next to each other, they must equal 180 together. So if this is 50, I need 130 to make 180. So angle 4 equals 130. Right? I need 130 here plus 50 is 180 to make this angle from here. Watch, I'll, I'll draw like a protractor. A protractor would lie there. And you know, a protractor goes from 0 to 180. Right? So let's um let's read these angle of measure four equals 130 because angle one and angle four are supplementary angles supplementary angle means they together they add up to be 180 and if we know that this is 130 two must be 130 as well because they are vertical okay we'll practice this more in class but before i move on i want to ask you to stop and reflect for a second. Knowing what we've learned about corresponding angles and knowing that angle 1 is 50, could you solve for angle 5? Well, you can see that they're both acute angles with the same parallel line and the same transversal. That means they are corresponding angles. So if this is 50, this must be 50, correct? If 1 is 50, the vertical angle is also 50, which means if this is 50, the vertical angle must also be 50. So you notice how you're solving for every angle here by only knowing 1? Now let's take a look at a real-world example. Here we have a bookshelf, a fancy bookshelf. They're not totally uh, perpendicular lines, okay, vertical and horizontal. They, we've got some angled lines. A furniture designer built a bookshelf shown. Line A is parallel to line B. Line A parallel to line B. Yeah, they're both perfectly horizontal. If measure of angle 2 equals 105, okay, right here, angle 2 equals 105, that must mean that angle 5 is also 105, yeah, because they're vertical angle. And uh, angle 1 and 6 must be the remaining to make it to 180, so this must be 75, and this must be 75, correct? Because I need 75 more to get 180. Find measure of angle 6 and angle 3. Angle 6 and angle 3. Which these are going to be interior or alternate interior angles. Right? So whatever this is will be here. Which is the same thing as here. Alright, let's see. So since angle 2 and angle 6 are supplementary. Angle 2 and angle 6 are supplementary. They must equal 180. The sum of their measures is 180. If angle 6 equals 180 minus 5 or 75, right? We, we subtract 105 because uh, we know that angle 2 is 105, as this tells us up here. So we have to subtract that from 180 because that, all the whole thing is 180, and we get one, um, our 75, our difference. Since angle 6 and angle 3 are interior angles, that lie on opposite sides of the transversal, they are alternate interior angles. The measure of alternate interior angles are equal to measure of 75. Measure of angle 3 is 75. So 75, 75, 75. So 1, 6, 3, and 8 are all 75, while 4, 7, and 2, and 5 are all 105. Okay, let's see this. Refer to the situation above. Okay. Refer to the situation above. Find measure four. Justify your answer. Well, we just did, didn't we? <laughs> we um we know that measure two is 105, right? And corresponding angle would be measure four. Right? Corresponding angle because we can take this line and cut it perfectly and place it right here and it would fit just like a Lego piece or a puzzle. We can say angle 2 and angle 4 are corresponding angles, so their measures are equal. So, yeah, we could find measure 4. 
right? Because we said that measure two is 105, that must mean um, angle four is also 105 degrees. Okay, and finally example four. Here you can see that we have uh, two parallel lines, right? And we also have um, two transversal. And the two transversal are perpendicular because they make a perfect 90 degree angle. We could solve for all these with just knowing by only knowing one angle. And we do. Angle 8 is 90. So if angle 8 is 90 degrees because it's perfect perpendicular, perpendicular um, the vertical angle is 5. So that's also 90. Okay? And we would have to solve for if we go like this and we go all the way to here. Okay? Um, we could solve for 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and see the example. In the figure, line M is parallel to line N, and line Q is perpendicular to line P. So line M is parallel to line P. There we go. And line P is, perpendi is perpendicular to line Q, as they're saying. You see that? The measure of angle 1 is 40 degrees. So they give us 40 degrees here. So here, angle 1 is 40 degrees. That must mean that angle 3 is also 40 degrees because they are corresponding angles. You see that? Now that I have 90 and 40, I, right here, I have 130. What am I missing? I'm missing 50 degrees, aren't I? To no, yes, to finish my 180. So I, can, I figured measure 4 already. So if this is 50, angle 7 is also 50. If this is, what did we say it was, 40? It means that angle 6 is also 40. Okay. So um, let's see, what is the measure of angle 7? Angle 7, there it is. Yeah, we just, we just solved for it. So since angle 1 and angle 6 are alternate exterior angles, Okay, alternate exterior angles here, 1 and 6. Um, and they both have a measure of 40. Okay, since 6, 7, and 8 form a straight line, you see, 6, 7, and 8 are all on this line right here, on this transversal. So when I add this angle plus this angle plus this angle, I should have 180. I already have 90, and I already have 40. So I have 130, so I'm missing 50 to make 180. Um, they, these three angles form a straight line. The sum of their measures is 180. So 40 plus 90 plus a uh, measure of angle 7 should be 180. So 40 plus 90 is 130. I'm missing 50 to get to 180. So measure of 7 is 50, as we mentioned. Okay, everyone, that's today's lesson. Here's the guide to practice. Please take a look at it. Make sure you feel comfortable with it. Look at the, the example, the picture here, um, and make sure that you know what we're talking about. If you don't, go back to example threes or examples one, two, and four from the video. And um, if you have any questions, bring them to class. See you then.